All right, welcome YouTube. I'm now live on blogtv.com along with on YouTube, so check me out here. I'm going to start off by talking about Chad Ochocinco. Ochocinco was interviewed after the Patriots lost their game to the Lions on Sunday. He was, they were asking him, he caught one pass, 14 yards, and a touchdown. That's his preseason stats right there. And they, he was asked after the game how he's doing, if he thinks he's really got a hold on the system yet. And basically, he said no. And he was very humble about it. And I give Ocho Cinco props for not blowing this out of proportion, making a big publicity stunt out of it. But basically, Chad Ocho Cinco's success in New England does not have anything to do with Chad Ocho Cinco. His success will ride on the decision making and the use of Ocho Cinco by both Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. If Bill Belichick likes him, he'll play a lot. If Tom Brady likes him, he'll throw the ball to him a lot. I think Ocho Cinco is still talented. I think he can still make big plays down the field for your team. But I do. Oh, I gotta start recording this. All right, so we're talking about Ocho Cinco, and I was just saying how Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are the two most influential people in his life right now. I would say he he needs these two. He needs Tom Brady to kind of get him adjusted to the system, get him adjusted to Foxborough, get him ready for the season. Um, I don't know. I just think if Ocho Cinco is going to be better than he was last year, it's going to be because those two guys help him out so much. If he gets no help, he's going to struggle. He's not going to be great. People are going to be talking about getting him out of there. Then he's going to be in a bad mood. He's going to pull something crazy, and Belichick's going to get mad, and there's just going to be a whole big controversy there. So let's all just hope that Ocho Cinco can stay within himself. I mean, I think he's a lock for an 85 catch a year with probably 8 to 12 touchdowns with Tom Brady thrown to him. I mean, it's solid. He's solid. He's got a lot, I think, still left in the tank. I think being in a more professional mindset he'll be able to focus more i think ultimately he'll play better he could i'm not saying he's getting the best season of his career but come on he's actually got a real quarterback thrown to him tom brady is way more of a quarterback than andy D or not andy Dalton. carson carson palmer ever will be so he's got a real guy thrown to him he's got a real team that's actually going to be competitive and possibly be looking at a super bowl win so that's why I just think he's in the best scenario now. If he struggles, then there's going to be huge question marks, but I don't think he's going to struggle. I think he's going to be good from the start. So, I don't know. I just think it's going to be good stuff. So, now I'm going to move on to more, more football. I'm going to talk about today John Clayton, the old guy on ESPN, put out his top, I think it's his top, uh, thir it's just all his top starting quarterbacks for each team for the year. And let's t think about this for a minute. Who's going to be on top but Tom Brady? Tom Brady is the top quarterback on this list. He's going to run down through the top ten first, and I'll tell you about other notables that he has on here and what he said. So he's got Tom Brady. Two, Aaron Rodgers at two, Peyton Manning at three, Drew Brees at four, Roethlisberger and Rivers at five, six, Matt Ryan and Michael Vick, seven, eight, Eli Manning and Tony Romo at nine, ten. So those are your top ten quarterbacks according to John Clayton in the National Football League. But basically, I don't know. I think he got it pretty close to being right. I think definitely Tom Brady has to be considered the best quarterback in the NFL, especially after his season last year. So uh, Aaron Rodgers, rising star, he'll be eventually the number one, I would say. You could look at him. If he makes another deep playoff run, he could be that number one guy next year. Peyton Manning, I don't think he should be three. I think Manning should be below Drew Brees, definitely. Uh, Phillip Rivers, I think, is also very underrated at six. But another surprise I would say is definitely Michael Vick, especially with the huge Michael Vick hype that's around all of sports. Everybody's in love with Michael Vick right now. Um, a lot different than it was a couple months ago, 
or a year ago, but still everybody's in love with Michael Vick. He's a good guy. He's playing good. Um, I just like what he's doing. I think Eli Manning should definitely not be a nine. The guy's a joke. He's weak. He's weak-hearted. He doesn't really know what he's doing. I think definitely Matt Schaub should be above him. Matt Schaub is probably easily on the most underrated person on this list at 12. He's pet. I mean, he, his, all right, his team hasn't really performed up to its potential. But in this past two years, he's thrown for over 9,000 yards and 53 touchdowns. I mean, the guy's got ridiculous stats. He's got stats rendering that of Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning. I think mean, you could definitely slide him in at the five spot where Roethlisberger is. Roethlisberger, I'd say he's over. He's a big guy. He's got a big arm, but I think he's definitely overrated. So that's my take on John Clayton's list of the top players in the net, of the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. Now I'm going to go to some scores and updates of today's action in sports. And then the YouTube video will be over. Let's go. We'll talk baseball now. All right, we got two games in action right now. The Dodgers lead the Padres at home 4-2 to two in the bottom of the sixth. And San Francisco leads Chicago 3 nothing in San Francisco. That's all, That's in the top of the six. Two finals. Detroit came back against Kansas City. They won 5-4. Minnesota continued their, continues a little hot streak, knocking off Chicago. They had a six-run first inning, tacked on one more, won the game 7-6. to six. Good win for Minnesota. Action tonight, of course, we got the Yankees and Boston going at it. Phil Hughes against... I want to say, yeah, Phil Hughes, Josh Beckett. Uh, then we got Toronto, Baltimore, Oakland, Cleveland, Washington, Atlanta. We'll talk more about Washington after the YouTube video ends, so you guys stay tuned here for that. Uh, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, Florida at the Mets, Tampa at Texas, Pittsburgh, Houston, St. Louis, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, of course, has like a nine-game lead over St. Louis. That that division got ugly quick. Colorado, Arizona. Arizona's pulling away out west, so that's something to look at. And the Angels look to get a win in Seattle tonight, so that's something to check out. Of course, the Yankee game's going to be on ESPN tonight, so definitely check that out. I'm going to talk about the Yankees here in a minute. But for my YouTube people, that's all I got for you guys today. Tune in again on Friday to get your next video. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm out.